Episode 5. What time can teach us? Over the following months, Injin would sometimes make the news. Dr. Henry Wu, lead scientist of international genetics and the genius behind their now famously cloned dinosaurs, has come with a new breakthrough. A board of scientists have named in his honor, Carcosis Wutansis. This simple looking flower is the first step to fighting diseases like Creutzfeldt Jakob disease, says Dr. Wu. Dark day for InGen, as their former CEO John Hammond, best known as the creative mind behind InGen's dinosaurs, died today. He was admitted to the Virginia Medical Center in Richmond earlier this year after suffering a seizure, shortly after an incident in San Diego involving one of his dinosaurs. We extend our deepest sympathies to the family in these dark times. InGen, the company founded by the late John Hammond, announced that they will soon be on the market for a new owner. Speculation has it that they've already found a new buyer. The question does remain if this includes the rights to the famous, or should we say infamous, dinosaur islands off the coast of Costa Rica, which of course have been under quarantine ever since the San Diego incident last year. Back in the early 90s, Biology Synthetics Technologies Incorporated did show interest in the company after InGen suffered significant financial loss, but InGen was able to keep enough of their investors to stay. In other news, Mizrani Global is now the proud new owner of International Genetics. A Costa Rican government official commented that dinosaur islands will remain under restricted access. But what Henry Wu was up to did not come to light. End of Act 1. Act 2, four years after the San Diego incident. In a simple village surrounded by tropical forest, a small community of people has been living in isolation peacefully. The village goes by the name of Tiempo Libre and is located on Isla Matanceros of the island chain known as Las Cinco Muertes, 20 miles north of Isla Sona. It is a former off-site worker village consisting of small houses and sheds with thatched roofs. A lightly colored woman, Andrea, presumably of Costa Rican descent, is feeding the chickens and other livestock that walk around among the houses. Her eight-year-old son Mama, comes running up to her, mira, holding a dead, half-eaten chicken in his hands, thinking it were rats that caught the animal. Andrea takes the animal from the boy and inspects it, touching a white, foamy and sticky substance surrounding the eaten parts of the chicken. Saliva? No, no han sido las ratas, hijo. No he visto ratas en semanas, pero estas marcas las conozco. Recognizing the bite marks. Compi, ¿qué hacen aquí, matanceros? On the grass, outside the New York College building, Tim Murphy, now 17 years old, sits together with a sweet-looking girl in the midst of other groups and lone students. Squinting up at the bright shining sun, in a clear blue sky, he receives a peck on the cheek, and Tim smiles happily. Suddenly, the sky turns clouded, and the bright colors of the sunlit day turn grayish and dark. It starts to rain heavily. Tim is now all alone on the grass, frozen stiff, pale white, knowing what is coming from behind the college building. A Tyrannosaurus Rex. Slowly, the Tyrannosaurus turns to look at Tim, lowers its head, and... Ah! He woke up screaming from his daydream nightmare, sitting up straight, fully dressed on his bed. His roommate looking flustered, eyes white, looking up from his computer. Jeez, Tim, you scared the hell out of me. Sorry. How the hell do you figure they'll let you join the Navy with nightmares like that? Yeah, I wondered about that too. Tim gets up from his bed and gets his books to get his class. You need help, man. Okay, that's enough. Be a good sport and keep quiet about it, okay? You know me. Thanks, bro. Tim walks out of the dormitory room into the hallway, crowded with students. The man that was waiting for him there was most likely the least person he had expected to see today, or any other day for that matter. 